Uh, Mark, uh, tell me a little bit about how you got started with your trekking. Ah, well, uh, let's see. I shot my first Flintlock rifle in 1977. During the summer, I'd gone back to Ohio to visit my father's relative, and my cousin had married a man who, uh, Glenn Fortney, called the Crab Man, who uh, married him, and he was involved in rendezvous and buckskinning, you know, as it was called then, and he taught me how to shoot a flintlock rifle, throw a tomahawk, start the fire flint steel, all that basic stuff, but wet my appetite. I had to go back for one more year of, of college, uh, back to California, so it was always like burning in the back of my mind. Although, you know, my favorite movies on, you know, on film were always those frontier movies, and, you know, then westerns, uh, then dramas, you know, but I, not science fiction, not fantasy, but, you know, that those frontier colonial movies I love, whether they were flaky like Disney or, uh, or uh, serious drama like Drunk Clone Mohawk, okay. or, yeah. uh, you know, I just loved them. And, well, anyway, so I went back to college for a year and then got my first teaching job. Moved back to Michigan uh, and joined a muzzleloading gun club there. Mm -hmm. I had a Thompson Center Renegade, converted to Flintlock, brass tacks all over it. Okay. Been and there. then I. <laughs> yeah. So we went back to Michigan, my wife and I. We joined a muzzleloading gun club. Uh, I had a Thompson Center Renegade with a uh, converted to Flintlock. Tax all over it. Bought my wife a 45 caliber Seneca. I think I put tax all over hers too. In fact, I bought it as a wedding present. And there we had, go. Had the brass patch box inscribed, you know, to her some endearment. She was very patient um, with me, and she loves me still. Uh, Jim Wright, American Pioneer Video, says that my wife is like Rebecca Boone. Very patient, very understanding. That's very, a compliment. Uh, yes, yeah, she's a. Uh, her name is Marla, so she's wonderful, and she has Norwegian blood, so she's very patient over long winters, <laughs> but has Irish red hair, so uh, it's fun to see the fire in her eyes. There you go. And, uh, anyway, so we went to this gun club, and we shooting like on Wednesday nights or Tuesday nights or something, and, and everybody had these wonderfully nice rifles, and the guy next to me was shooting, had a beard, uh, thick hair, and he said, you're Mark Baker. And I, yeah. And it happened to be Judd Brennan, and we had gone to grade school together out in Arizona. He had he was in like fifth grade, I was in fourth grade. But at that point in our lives, that I was 22, he was 23, we remembered each other from grade school. Once I heard his voice, of course he had the beard now, you know, so a lot of us hidden. Well, everybody was shooting a Judd Brennan rifle, Jaegers, uh, long Jaegers, transitional mm -hmm. rifles. Ron LeClaire was there shooting, who is, I think, a national champion. He's left-handed, mm -hmm. too. And I've since seen video of him taking a long ball and shooting arrows and hitting the quarters or whatever oh, yeah. they do, you know. He's, yeah. he's a very good eye-hand coordination. Well, um, so I had to, you know, eventually I saw that I needed to order a Judd Brennan rifle. Didn't have a whole lot of money. First year teacher, you understand that? I do. I do. Well, up in Michigan, the ten, the real strong union state, and they went on strike, and so to appease the union, all teachers without tenure got laid off to make up for the new money from the tenure teachers. So I was without a job by um, middle of September. You know, so I had just started, and I was out. Well, in my in my um, teaching file. At back at Point Loma Nazarene University, I was the only one who's ever put on their file I would like to teach on a knee reservation. I had really positive experience with um, with um, with uh, uh, missionaries who worked on the Navajo reservation and who came uh, to church and tell me stories. You know, and sure. I'd like to teach on a reservation. Uh, right there, Mike Miller, Green Coat. And so. Um, Anyway, they needed this te English teacher out on the Navajo Reservation on the New Mexico side, a place called Tohatchee, and 30 miles north of Gallup, roughly. And uh, so they called 
my rifle's on the top row if you want to see my rifle, or you can see any of them, I'm sure that's this Mike Miller right there. And sorry. Right. It I sounds like it's on me, it's like we're here at some place in Florida. I won't, on things like that, I won't hit the pause button, I'll just resume whenever you, yeah. whenever you pick it up. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, and so, they called the Port Loma Nazarene University because the counselor was the Nazarene minister's wife in there town. There you go. So it was all networking, right? So she sure. knew about the university. Oh yeah, we have somebody who wants to teach on a reservation. So that, anyway, long story short, I was, out of, I was out of work by the 1st of October, wondering what was going to happen. Get a phone call, how fast can you get to the reservation? So we back in. packed everything up on our Ford half-ton truck, like looked like the Beverly Hill Village, and then taped and bolted it up around. And my wife and I, and now a little baby, uh, went on back to New Mexico. In while I was in New Mexico, I had not paid off all my rifle because I was poor. Sure. And paid off a little bit of a month over that next year. I hadn't, hadn't got the rifle yet. Paid off a little bit over at New Mexico, gave everybody like $1,100 bonus or something. So I had enough to pay it off that next June. The rifle came the week that my wife, daughter was born in July of 1980. And uh, so I named her Moriah, which is Hebrew for gift of God or promise mm -hmm. of God. The mount where uh, Isaac was prepared to be sacrificed by Abraham, okay. where David started Jerusalem, where Solomon mm -hmm. built the temple. Mm -hmm. And so because the rifle came the same week as my daughter, that's why I named her that. But my, we named her daughter Carrie. And little did we know that uh, 15 years later, somebody, Mariah Carey would be famous, but um, <laughs> that wasn't on purpose. Well, anyway, so while I was in New Mexico, did my research, made my clothing, tried things out. By 1982, I think, I was making my first uh, scout into the woods, trying to do okay. things right. And what we would do, because there's national forest out there in New Mexico, and we had two big rendezvous a year, mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. and one in the winter, but that was inside of city parks, so we couldn't do this. Well, okay. so on state forest ones, we would park 15 miles or so away, mm -hmm. lock up the truck. In those days, you could pretty well leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And we put on our gear, okay. and we just start walk across the country. We wouldn't fall in the road or anything. We'd look, this is where we are, look at the bearings on our compass and take off and go towards the sound of the shooting. So it really gave it a wonderful sense of time and place okay. because we had to go on our compass bearings mm -hmm. and then as we got close just listen, sure. look for tents and TV poles. Mm -hmm. Then we get somebody at the end of the weekend, Ron to give us a ride down the road in okay. truck. That's That's somebody else is going out. I can. Right, and so that was fun to do. It, that takes your family out of the equation, but my wife had two babies and she was busy and she was perfectly happy. Again, Rebecca Boone, it's okay, mm -hmm. honey. You know? mm -hmm. And so we, uh, you know, we kept improving, you know, and, mm -hmm. I, and my first big partner was Jim Briggs, mm -hmm. lives in Washington State now, uh, but I met him in New Mexico at a Memorial Day uh, New Mexico Mountain Man Rendezvous on Mount Taylor. Okay. I had walked into it. Mm -hmm. He was the only other guy dressed in Eastern clothing there. Okay. I was kind of quasi right. Mm -hmm. He was he was a lot better than I was. But we made instant friends because of that we entered the Mountain Man Run together, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw him throw a Fort Meade's belt axe in the Tomahawk competition. It bounced back in the air, and he caught it by his hand, turned and threw it again, and stuck it. And everybody applauded, so they let him let him count it. <laughs> but that with him. As my partner, we'd meet and do different things. We would we would test ourselves. Mm -hmm. We didn't go in there with the idea. Of, okay, how far can we push ourselves? It was just well, 15 <laughs> mile, miles. Miles fine. Let's try 30. Just, okay. You know, we were doing that kind of stuff before Glenn Jones ever got the idea of the American Long Rifle Association, okay. and that, you know, and, the, and he and I remember Glenn quizzing us at a Western Rendezvous up in Utah, Jim and I, about his ideas and what we would think would work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, I'm not saying that he's, you know, he he did reference us. He did, mm -hmm. you know, he did consult on us, saying that that sure. is our idea. I'm not yeah. by any means, but we were doing that stuff of Prior which he would ask me questions about, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and so that's how it started. And then I sent an article in on snowshoeing this in Sawtooth to mm -hmm. Muzzleloader Magazine, and that was published in July, I think. Oh, maybe May, May of 1986. Okay. 
You've been pretty much or at July, this since July, then. What's that? You've been pretty much at that this since then. Right. How, how many times do you, can you get away a year to do this kind of thing? That, that depends. That's, that's an accumulative question in that when my children were babies, I did a lot of long oh. ones between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. uh, long ones in the summer, mm -hmm. short ones on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, my wife was perfectly happy with the babies, and then like at Christmas we'd take the family down to Phoenix where both of our sets of our parents were. So grandkids are with grandparents, Marlis is with her mother, everything's fine, I can disappear. I just have to be back at New Year's Eve to kiss my sure. wife at midnight. <laughs> uh, so again, she's been wonderfully accommodating. Sure. And, uh, Do you continue to teach? Yes. Okay. High school teacher. I teach at Franklin Road Academy in Nashville, Tennessee. I mm -hmm. live in Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. So it's about a 15 minute drive, 20 minute drive, and um, that's why I had to cut my hair. People always ask me, why did you cut your hair? Oh. Is I chose to teach at this private academy, whereas when you're public school and you have tenure, you know, they can't tell you anything, right? Yeah. So, private school is yeah, there. Right? right, so they asked me, would you, you know, if I, we gave you this job, would you be willing to cut your hair? Mm -hmm. Sure, because my son had wanted to go there. My son was a very good athlete, my youngest, and he wanted to go to the Franklin Road Academy for the baseball coaching. Mm -hmm. The head coach there was five years pro of the Cincinnati Reds organization. Okay. Well, it was a good move for Clayton because he broke five hitting records at FRA that had stood, some of them since 1986. He broke them in two years as opposed to four years of high school. <laughs> that coach just taking what he saw, fine tuning it. Oh, that's great. And he broke the home run hitting record and uh -huh. et, cetera, et cetera. But anyway, when I went there, uh, I, had I had to cut my hair. Mm -hmm. So if I ever got back to public school, I'd probably grow it out again. Sure. But I enjoy teaching every day. Yeah. And uh, it's just hard to leave something that you enjoy very much. Yeah. I've, I've been there. I enjoy it. I think the only thing I enjoy more than teaching is learning. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So I, there I'm at that little uh, conference last night, very informal. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, they're talking about things that I'll probably never, ever practice or try because I'm not going to make my own rifle. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to forge a lock. Mm -hmm. If it's broke, I'll give it to Mike Miller and he'll fix it. Yeah. You know, but I, I just, it's just fun to learn. You're right. Yeah. Uh, that's, been, that's been my approach and why I call my articles a Pilgrim's Journey is that, you know, I don't call it the scout's report or the captain's mm -hmm. roll call or anything like that. You know, as in the words of David Crockett, I consider myself nothing more than a high private maybe, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in that, if I call it a pilgrim's journey, it's, a, it's a, an allusion to a pilgrim's progress, sure. uh, Christian, thank you. Christian working his way towards heaven, you don't mm -hmm. have to go through Vanity Fair, and et cetera, oh, yeah. et cetera. Um, well, or a pilgrim on, on a pilgrimage to the Vatican or something, sure. or, uh, so I, I use that, that Christian, you know, allusion because that's important to me, but it's just it's just fun to talk in illusions. Yeah. And so my I, I attitude has always been, I am a pilgrim. I am not Simon Clinton talking you know, down sure. to you. I'm, I'm a pilgrim with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I do write it. I study novels every day. I teach novels. I study writing. I teach writing. So my writing, I want to get better. So it, it has taken on a greater depth over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has helped me be a better teacher, but it has also helped me be a better uh, doer in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, it's helped me be a better storyteller. It, it has helped my profession as a teacher, mm -hmm. this that I do. And I don't think I call it a hobby. A lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. But a hobby is something you do when you don't sweat. <laughs> you know, and, um, I like that. When, like the string of articles I'm working on now, John Howe and I went again between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. He had to be home to kiss mm -hmm. his wife at New Year's. Sure. So we crossed the river at dusk, and we spent four four days in torrential rainstorm hiding out in a cave, mm -hmm. a very shallow cave. That's not how we had a plan. I, if anything, I guess it's a sport because mm -hmm. you do tackle yourself physically, you do compete with yourself, you do try for perfection.